All right, so today we're going to look at distance. Okay, distance. And what is distance? Distance is just the space between two things. Let's call things. Uh, in geometry, mainly you're going to cover points, lines, and planes. A point is just simply one. Oh, man. There it is. A uh, point is simply a point in space. A line is uh, something that goes on forever like that. And then a plane is actually two-dimensional space. It has length and width. Okay? So if I measure a distance between two points, we call that a line segment. Uh, if I measure the distance between two lines, we're actually just finding the distance between two specific points on their line that are perpendicular to each other. And then with a plane, we're measuring in three-dimensional space, right? We're measuring that. If we have length and width, we're measuring the height. If we have length and height, we're measuring the width, and so on and so forth. So it starts off saying that A and B are on a number line. It says A is at negative 2, and it says B is at positive 5. Well, we can measure the distance, or we can count the distance, by going negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, squeeze that one in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 units. We counted 7 units in between A and B. So we know that AB is equal to 7 units, right? Well, we count, what about B to A? Is it negative 7 units? No, it's still 7 units. B is 7 units away from A, and A is 7 units away from B. We call that absolute value. So in that little box with a line, you're going to write absolute value. What is absolute value? Absolute value is the two vertical lines around something. So whenever we see these signs right here, that says absolute value. So if it says the absolute value of X is 3, well, we know that X is equal to positive 3, or X could be equal to negative 3. How so? Well, on a number line, if we imagine zero in the middle here, and we went three units, one, two, three units to the right, that would give us positive three. But equally, one, two, three units to the left is going to be negative three. Negative three and positive three are both three units away from zero. It's like, it's like facing forward and taking three steps versus facing backward and taking three steps. You still took three steps. You didn't take negative three steps going backward. Okay? So you're still a positive direction. Okay? So the equation for AB is actually going to be the absolute value of A minus B. Or it could be at the absolute value of B minus A because it doesn't matter which direction you're going because of the absolute value. And let's test that theory out real quick. We know that AB was equal to negative 2 minus positive 5, which would give us the absolute value of negative 7. But the absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. Let's try it the other way, just so we know that it works. AB is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus negative 2. Remember, subtraction is built into the equation. And that gives us the absolute value of positive 7. Well, that's still positive 7. So it doesn't matter if you count going forward or backward. It just doesn't matter. The absolute value is always positive. Okay? And let's test that theory again with P, Q, and R. We know that P is at negative 3.5. We know that Q is at negative 2. And we know that R is at 2.5. Okay, let's plug those into this uh, absolute value equation here, our distance equation. And this only works on one-dimensional areas. Well, I'll show you two-dimensional in just a minute. So uh, if we wanted to measure the distance of PQ, we would say the uh, absolute value of P minus Q or the absolute value of negative 3.5 minus negative 2. And we would find out that is the absolute value of negative 1.5, but we know that the absolute value of negative 1.5 is positive 1.5. Okay? Next, we look at QR, which is the absolute value of Q 
minus r, which is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2.5, which is going to give us the absolute value of negative 4.5, which gives us 4.5. Now to find the distance of p and r, we could just add these two together and find 6, or we can plug them in. The absolute value of negative 3.5 minus 2.5 or the absolute value, sorry, the absolute value of P minus R, or the absolute value of negative 3.5 minus 2.5, which is the absolute value of negative six, or just six, okay? It works 100% of the time, all the time. Now on a two dimensional plane where you can't count because you have a diagonal number, we use the distance formula. The distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that is our distance, distance formula. And I'll explain how that came to be real quick. Okay, let's look at a diagonal line. Well, <clears throat> We call that one x1 and y1, and we call this one x2 and y2. Okay, well, if we wanted to make a triangle out of this, we could count this many units over to the right and this many units up, and then we would have a nice little triangle, right? So if we're counting left to right, we're using our x values. So we go from x1 to x2. Okay, well, how do I find the distance between x1 and x2? Well, we know that it's x2 minus x1. It's where we ended minus where we started, and that finds that distance. Okay, and then how do I find my vertical distance here? Well, that's y1 and y2, or y2 minus y1, where you started or where you ended minus where you started. Okay, now if we were to make this the Pythagorean theorem, we would say this side squared plus this side squared is equal to this side squared. Okay, so x squared or x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared is equal to, let's call this d for distance distance squared. Well, how do I get rid of that square for the distance? Well, I do the square root over the whole thing, and that cancels out my square. So that's how we got our distance formula, okay? So how do we do the distance formula? First, you have to name your points, x1, y1, x2, y2. You got to figure out which one is x1, y1, which one is x2, y2. Now, the second thing you do is you plug them into the formula, plug in. And then the third step would be the same as midpoint theorem, which is just solve, except for we don't say just solve whenever we have a radical sign. We say simplify the radical. Okay, we simplify the radical. We don't just plug in numbers, hit them in the calculator and hit solve. So let's run through the practice real quick. Ignore CD real quick and look at example five and look at A. A is... The point uh, negative 8, comma, negative 7, or positive 7, sorry. Negative 8, positive 7, and 12, negative 9. Well, we're going to plug them in. First, we name our points. This is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. Now we plug them in. Square root of 12 minus negative 8 squared plus negative 9 minus 7 squared. Okay, well, what is 12 minus negative 8? Well, that's 20. And what is 20 squared? Well, 20 squared is 400. So it's the square root of 400 plus negative 9 minus 7 is negative 16. Okay, and negative 16 squared is I'm going to type that one in my calculator here. 
Negative 16 squared is 256. If you got negative 256, that means you didn't wrap it around in parentheses before you squared it. Now we're going to add these two values together, and we're going to get the square root of 656. Okay, if you type that into your calculator, you get a big, ugly number. That means we have to simplify this, the radical. You remember how to do this? You divide out perfect squares. Because this is a big number, I'm going to divide out a big number. Okay? I have 656, and I'm going to divide out 16. And it works. We get the square root of 16 times 41. Can we take any other perfect squares out of 41? No. It's prime. So I'm going to split this into two things. Y'all remember doing this? And then calling this plus or minus 4 times the square root of 41. Now, we don't have to say plus or minus in this situation. Why not? Because it's distance, so it's always positive. Okay? So we'd say A, B equals 4 times the square root of 41. A, B equals 4 roots of 41. All right? I'm going to hit pause real quick and set up the next one.